this is Groovy. I'm here with Dr. Angel here at the Breckenridge Brewery. She is the co-founder of Comic-Con and the Comic Book Classroom, and also a graphic novel and literary conference that I completely can't remember the name of. How are you? I'm well, thanks. It's Rocky Mountain Conference on Comics and Graphic Novels. Awesome. Awesome. So tell me how this all got started. Oh, my. Um... <laughs> It started a while ago. Um, there were actually uh, four original guys who got together and had this idea, um, and the two who are still with us are Frank Romero and Charlie LaGreca, mm -hmm. and they had this fantastic idea that they should do some kind of um, educational program with comics because they were talking about how they learned to read using mm -hmm. comics, and, um, and then Frank had a great idea that, oh, hey, we should do a Comic-Con. Um, as a fundraiser, and uh, and Frank and I go way, way, way back. Uh -huh. um, and so he found out I was teaching a class on comics and brought me on board, and uh, and another gentleman named Ilya Kualchek. And uh, we all got together and put together this after-school program called mm -hmm. the Comic Book Classroom, and it's a nonprofit. And what it does is um, it's a standards-based uh -huh. uh, curriculum for kids right now in fifth through eighth grade. And it's free to schools, and it's free to the kids. And we come in and we teach uh, reading skills um, and basic storytelling skills. And uh, eventually they get to build and create their own comics. That's awesome. It's really a wonderful program, and we're really excited about it. Um, since then, we've also we've partnered with the Stan Lee Foundation, um, who's a big supporter. And eventually we'd like to make this a nationwide program. Sure. Um, we'd also like to eventually make our curriculum available to teachers, just teachers who want it. Um, either for during school time or after, mm -hmm. um, and then eventually provide teacher training. So this is a, a long-term um, educational initiative that we have um, going for us. And um, and then in order to fund all of that, because that takes money, <laughs> we decide. I know, I know, it's crazy. Um, that we decided that we would we would do the the Denver Comic Con, and uh, which is the main fundraiser for the Comic Book Classroom project. So, all proceeds um, from the con currently go into the Comic Book Classroom program. It's amazing, amazing. Um, I, I gotta say, on a personal level, because when I was growing up, I grew up in the swamps of Wisconsin, out in the middle of nowhere. Is that the only thing I ever read when I was a kid was comic books? I mean, I had every comic book known to man, mm -hmm. but when they tested me for my vocabulary and things like that, I was always like three or four mm -hmm. grades ahead. Do you, do you get that a lot? I do get that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I myself learned to read very young, and, and I didn't come to comics until later in my mm -hmm. life. But, but I do see that I think comics teach children a, a really wide vocabulary. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't possibble remember the word off the top of my head, but Charlie the Greco will tell you that there's this really big $3 word that he learned when he was like seven from reading a comic book. So um, I'm not surprised because the one thing that I think comics do is that they, you know, at every level, they, they never talk down to their readers. Right. Um, which is, I think, one of the things that attracts kids to it, actually, um, is that it, it sort of asks you to, to come to its level. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm not at all surprised to hear that. I, I hear that a lot. Um, and that comics are kind of what is the word, um, a gateway drug to reading, if you will. <laughs> you know, that, right. that you're sort of lured in by, by like the cool, hip comic book, but, but it really does have the ability to teach you a lot of, a lot of language skills. Um, oh, absolutely. And, and a lot of sort of desire to continue reading, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. Now, um, w with the classroom itself and everything, I, I know, I know you're like sort of the architect but not necessarily in the day-to-day -day operations. But when you're putting it together, what was like the vision everyone had? Yeah, um, I'm definitely not the sole architect. This was a, okay. a group effort. In fact, um, Ilya did most of the composing of the curriculum, um, and then Charlie did the artwork. And mm -hmm. I, I think I'm responsible for the introduction and the research or something like that. Um, sorry, I forgot your question now. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like putting it all together? Like, um, one concrete unit. Oh, I think, like I said, the, the thing that we were most um, engaged in is, is helping kids to read. Um, mm -hmm. And particularly, we were interested in the, the kids who were maybe not doing so well in school um, and the kids who needed some additional um, inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, and, and not just that, but also I think that um, the ability to tell your own story and to write your own story and create your own story um, gives you an outlet, um, especially for, for kids who maybe don't have an outlet otherwise. You know, who maybe have not such a great time at home or struggle in school or maybe have, 
learning disabilities. Um, and I think that we have a particular affinity for that group because we were that group. Right. You know, we were, um, I grew up in a time when, you know, when I was a kid in Denver, there could have been a Comic-Con, but 12 people would have been there, right? Um, and, and so, you know, we all kind of came up in a generation where it wasn't really cool to be nerdy. Right. Um, and, and so I think we sort of appreciate those, those kind of people who are on the fringes. You know, we want, we want to get to them. We want to say, hey, you know, there, there's a place for you too, right? And then everybody has a voice. And, and we'd like to show you and help you develop that voice, whoever you are. So can anyone get involved with this? I mean, any level of skill with drawing and storytelling and all that kind of stuff? Um, in terms of working in the, with the classroom? Yeah. Absolutely. We, we need volunteers at all levels. Um, we need um, fully licensed teachers. Um, we also need uh, volunteers um, to help those teachers in the classroom. Um, and, and of course, for all the way around, we need an army of volunteers. Um, and we, we will turn no one away who wants to help us, <laughs> um, as, as any wise nonprofit would do. Um, yeah, even so Matthew could even Matthew could help out. Yes, um, anyone um, could, could give, us, give us a hand who wanted to. There's always something to be done. Um, and anybody who wants to help further this mission you know, we're, we're in um, because we really believe in it and, um, and lots of other people are believing in it and we're very excited about it. So you, you, you build this wonderful, wonderful thing called the comic book classroom and now you have to fund it and you have this 400 pound gorilla of an idea. <laughs> How did that all come about? Uh, well, actually we began the classroom with zero money. Um, as most people do, uh, begin businesses. And uh, we, we ran our pilot program with um, all donated materials, including donated comic books, uh, donated arts, art supplies, everything. Um, but, but the initial plan was to, to have a Comic-Con in association with it so that we would have a fundraiser. Um, and the best part was when we first said that, other people in the Comic-Con business were like, you want to make money from this? <laughs> and so we were, you know, maybe a little bit afraid, but we, we, we did it anyway. We said, you know, we're going to have a con, and this will be our, our fundraiser for the comic book classroom, and, and, uh, and now it's this behemoth, really, um, <laughs> for lack of a better word. It's a monster, um, and we're so proud of it and so excited. I, I can't, you got to be so proud. Yes, I why? am. You know, every time I, I have to stop and think about it, though, because it, as, I, as I said to you when we were chatting earlier, it just doesn't seem real most days that... Um, that we had this idea and, and this army of us, you know, came together and pulled it off. Um, you know, you just don't get to say that very often in your life that, you know, you have a great idea and then watch it come to fruition and then so far beyond. Um, so, yeah, it, it is, it's, it's a really, really cool thing. And, and we're, I don't even know what else to say about that, except most days I don't even think it's real, you know. And the numbers completely blew your mind. The, the numbers are we're crazy. Um, I, as, as I was mentioning earlier, um, you know, we had a, an attendance of over 27,000 people um, last year, and and it was that was double what we were expecting easily. You know, okay. we uh, we initially had a ballroom space, and and we're expecting four or five thousand, and would have been really happy with that. Incidentally, um, and and it wasn't until a little bit later in the game that we realized it was going to be bigger. And, and so we got a bigger space, and we filled it up with people and vendors and guests and things, and, and, and still we're, we're afraid, you know, that, that it wasn't going to fly and, and that we'd be really happy to get ten or even 12,000 people. And, um, and even at the last minute, we were like, wow, we could maybe even see 15,000. And so when, when we got the final numbers in and it was over 27, I, I was completely flabbergasted. <laughs> I, 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 I still am now, you know, and, and to think that, you know, we're already considerably ahead of, of that number already this year with three months to go. I'm, yeah, I just don't know. So, on camera, give me your estimate for 2013. Oh, you know, this so bit me last year because I said 4,000 oh, no, people. <laughs> um, I, I honestly think we're going to hit 50,000. I really do, um, because I was so far off the mark last year that, that I'm just going big. I, I'm going to say 50,000. I completely agree. I'm, I'm so down with 50, yeah. I'm not even going to wrestle. Yeah, you know, um, I, and I think we're, we're probably planning for up to 60, just to be on the safe side, because sure. last year 
we grossly underestimated how many things we would need in terms of bags and programs and right. and and simple crowd control. Um, right. You know, we were we were really really overwhelmed. Well, I mean, just uh, in case anyone hasn't heard, I mean, give me the, some of the special guests and keynote speakers are uh, huge. They're legends. Oh yes, this year of course we have special guest Stan Lee. We'll get you don't get bigger than that. Yeah. You really don't. Um, and uh, and we just added Chris Ware. Um, who's going to be the keynote speaker for the literary conference, which is the prelude to the Comic-Con. And then he's going to be doing his big keynote address on Friday um, at the con, awesome. and um, which we're, we're shaping up to be Education Day, where we're going to invite students and teachers in particular to come and see Excellent. Chris Ware. Excellent. Yeah. Um, other big comic names. Um, you'll have to forgive me. I can't remember which ones I'm allowed to say. <laughs> um, we definitely have George Perez. Um, Bill Jimenez, um, lots, lots of people. I, like I said, I'm terrible on the spot, but <laughs> lots. You can check out our website. <laughs> that will, that will tell you. Yeah. Excellent. And we should probably cover the literary conference before the con. Yeah. Um, tell me what's going on with that. Um, the literary conference is a, a small event um, that brings scholars in the field, um, and and very a lot of people don't know that that comics scholarship is an actual thing. Um, that lots and lots of professors and teachers teach comics in a very real way and, and engage the theory of comics um, mm -hmm. and, and write scholarly work on it. Um, and so what the, the literary conference says is it bring those, brings those people together um, to present papers and to talk about their work. Mm -hmm. um, last year, we had our first year with that as well um, for Romo Coco, which is the cute little acronym for it. Um, it's too long a name to say otherwise. Um, and, and we had about 100 people in attendance last year, which is a, which is a nice size for yeah. a literary conference and, um, and had some of the, the biggest names in that field there. That's you know, awesome. um, Dr. Charles Hatfield was with us, um, James Bucky Carter, Rob Weiner. You know, these, are, these guys are all really well published in this field. Um, and and it, was, it was really exciting. And our keynote last year was Scott McLeod. Um, who is one of my personal heroes, and, and I use his work in my classrooms all the time um, just to teach rhetoric. Wow. Um, because really what he's talking about in understanding comics is rhetoric. Right. And, and so I, I spend a lot of time with him in the classroom, so it was really wonderful to get to meet him and talk to him and, and hang out. <laughs> I know. Um, I, had, I had a weird starstruck moment, you know, sitting there talking to uh, Scott McCloud at dinner. I'm like, I'm eating dinner with Scott McCloud. Yeah, <laughs> it was really surreal and very cool. And, um, and so, yeah, and that event was a great success. And, and the people who were, who were there had a great time. And I think most of them are coming back this year um, and bringing their friends. Um, so this year's event is, um, is going to take place at a rare campus uh -huh. at, the, at the Spring Hill Suites Marriott, um, which is owned by Metro, I believe. Uh -huh. um, and it's for their hospitality services program. And it's a cute little boutique hotel. And so we're going to be getting um, a larger academic community involved this year. And, and, uh, and Chris Ware is going to come visit and hang out with us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit excited about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a little. Yeah. It's awesome. So, like I said before, this is what success feels like, right? <laughs> yeah. It, it, like I said, it always feels, you know, uh, part kind of giddy giggliness and the other part horror uh, because there's there's a part of this is that's that's also quite terrifying um, sure. when I when I try to wrap my brain around the magnitude of what it is that we're doing and um, yeah yeah some days it's hard not to just sort of sit in a corner and rock back and forth and weep <laughs> because it, it it feels so strange and um, and and wonderful like i said it's almost all wonderful but it's also right. really overwhelming to think about oh, yeah. um, this this amazing thing that is happening congratulations on everything there is one last question just so we can make sure matthew gets this what are some of your favorite science fiction shows of all time especially number one number one is battlestar galactica baby yeah it's yeah i'm obsessed i i love bsg um huge firefly fan Huge. Yeah, Huge. Star Trek Next Generation, Might as well. um, and of course Walking Dead, mm. Once Upon a Time. Um, I don't think we talked about Warehouse 13, but I'm also a really oh. big fan of that one, too. Um, and and we actually have the, the main character from that show. Oh, really? Eddie, Eddie McClintock is one of our guests this year, awesome. and I'm really looking forward to meeting him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it'll be fun. Right on. Thank you so much for your time. So <laughs> this is Groovy. I'm here with Dr. Angel. Breckenridge Brewery, um, 
Comic Con's coming up. It's going to be awesome. 50,000 people. I'm going on record, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Rock on. <laughs>